Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are making a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape. In the last video, I focused purely on the UI part and added this simple main menu with a game title and two buttons. And as expected, on pressing the play button, the game starts normally. But as you can tell, right now we don't have a way to go back to main menu or even pause the game. And that is what we are going to address in this video. But before adding these features, I would like to add the default font in a correct way. This is because using Google Fonts forces our game to get internet permissions to download the font file. And it does not make sense to add internet permissions just to download a simple file which can be easily shipped with our app. I'll quickly go to the Google Fonts webpage and download the font file for Bungie Inline. Now back in our project, I'll create a folder called Fonts under Assets folder. Then I'll copy over the downloaded zip file and extract it here. It contains the actual font file along with the license file. And just to keep things organized, I'll create a separate folder for this font and move both these files in there. Okay, so now that we have the required files, let's go to the font section of our pub spec. Here I'll uncomment the font section. For family parameter, I'll specify bungee inline. Then for the asset parameter, we need to specify the relative path of .ttf file from the project root. And that is it. Now let's go to the main.dart file and replace this Google fonts with our downloaded font. For that, I'll replace all this with a new theme data. To keep the theme dark, I'll set brightness to brightness.dark. Then for the font family, I'll use the same string as we specified in pubspec. And finally, let's set the scaffold background color to colors.black. And that is it. This will make sure that same font gets used for all the text in this game. Also, in the main menu.dart file, we don't need to use this complex code for text style of game title. Instead, I'll use a simple text style with same shadow as before and font size as 50. Now let's build and run this code to see how it looks. And as you can see, we are still getting the same font. But the color of title is now white. I'll quickly set the color property of this text style to colors.black. And now it looks exactly like before. Okay, now let's get to the main topic of this video, the pause menu. For the pause menu, I'll be using the built-in widget overlay mechanism of Flame Engine. So first, let's create a folder called widgets under lib directory. And inside this folder, let's create one more folder called overlays. Now before working on pause menu, we need to provide an in-game button using which users can actually pause the game. And just like pause menu, this pause button will also be an overlay on top of our game. So in this overlays folder, I'll create a file called pause underscore button dot dart. This file will contain a stateless widget called pause button. I want to place this button at the top center of screen. So I'll return an align widget here. Child of this align widget will be a button with its child as icon widget, displaying a pause icon. I'll set the color of this icon to white so that it matches with color theme of this game. Let's keep the on pressed callback empty for now. And finally, I'll set the alignment property of align widget to top center. Now let's go to the gameplay.dart file to add this pause button as an overlay to our game widget. But before that, I'll quickly wrap this will pop scope widget in a scaffold. This will make sure that a valid scaffold is available to any text widget that we might add to any of the overlay widgets. So in the game widget, you can see that we can specify a property called overlay builder map. If you check the documentation of this property, you can see that it needs a map with key as string and value as function. And the function needs to accept a build context and an instance of underlying space escape game. So I'll quickly create a map here. Let's keep the key an empty string for now and value will be a function which takes a context and game ref as input. From this function, I'll return a pause button widget. Now as the key needs to be unique and should be somehow tied to the pause button widget, I'll go to pause button class and add a static const string called id. Let's set the value of this string to pause button. And now, back in gameplay.dart, we can set this key to pauseButton.id. So all the overlays specified in the overlay builder map are deactivated by default. This means pause button will not be visible until we explicitly tell Flame to activate this overlay. 
but we want the pause button to be visible as soon as the game starts. So to do that we can use the initial active overlays property. This property accepts a list of key strings and displays their corresponding overlay widget from overlay builder map as soon as the game starts. So here I'll specify pause button dot id. Now let's build and run this to see the pause button in game. And as you can see we now have a small pause button at the top center. So now let's implement the on press of this pause button. The base game from which our game class is derived already exposes a method to pause and resume the game. But to call that function from pause button we need a reference to the game instance. And if you see the overlay builder map you can see that game instance is already passed as an input to builder function. We just need to forward it to our pause button class. For that in pause button I'll add a final field of type space escape game called game ref. Next let's add this field as a required input to pause buttons constructor. And now in the on press of pause button we can call the pause engine function on this game ref. This should be enough to pause the game. Next let's implement a pause menu to be displayed when the game is paused. For that I'll create one more file under overlays called pause menu dart. As usual this file will also contain a stateless widget called pause menu. From the build method of this class I'll return a center widget with a column as its child. As this column will be very similar to the column from main menu I'll just copy that code here. So the title text for this overlay will be paused. Next this first elevated button will display resume. And in the on press we don't need this navigation code. So I'll cut it. Instead, we'll have to call the resume engine method on game ref here. Next, the second button will display exit instead of options. And here, in the on press, I'll paste the navigation code. Here, instead of navigating to gameplay, we'll navigate to main menu. Next, similar to pause button, let's quickly add a static con string ID and a final game ref to pause menu as well. Again, game ref will have to be added as a required property to pause menu's constructor. And this id string will be set to pause menu. Now in the on press of resume button, we can call game ref dot resume engine. So now to make sure that when players press the pause button, this pause menu overlay gets displayed, I'll go to the on press of pause button. And here, after pausing the engine, I'll write game ref dot overlays dot add, passing in the id of pause menu. And since the game will already be in pause state at this point, I'll call the remove method on overlays and remove current pause button overlay. And exactly opposite to this, in the on press of resume button of main menu, after calling resume engine, I'll first remove the current pause menu overlay and then add back the pause button overlay. Now let's go to the gameplay class to add the pause menu overlay to the overlay builder map. First. Let's set the required game ref property of pause button to input game ref. Now let's just duplicate this first entry and replace pause button with pause menu. And that is it. Now let's build and run this to see if it works. Okay. So now if I press this pause button, you can see that we are getting a pause menu with two buttons. If I press this resume button, the game resumes normally. You can even see how the pause button disappears and appears again when game is paused and resumed. And finally, if I press exit, we are navigated back to main menu. But wait, things can't go this perfectly, right? Especially when we wrote so much code without testing. And indeed, everything is not going according to the plan. If I press the play button again, you can see that now all this is a mess. So let's fix that real quick. First, to get rid of pause menu after we exit the game, I'll go to the on press of exit button. Here, before navigating to main menu, I'll remove the pause menu from overlays. So let's save this and go back to gameplay screen. Here, if I press exit, this pause menu should get removed. And we can verify this by going back to the gameplay screen. Okay, so this is working fine. The next thing that we need to worry about is the initialization of our game world. We can see that the number of enemies spawned right now is much higher than normal. This is because the game world is getting initialized multiple times when we go from main menu to gameplay screen. This happens because all the game world initialization code is written inside onload method of our game class. 
This method gets executed every time the game instance is added to the widget tree. So to avoid multiple initializations of all the components, we can use a private flag called is already loaded. Initial value of this flag will be false and we'll set it to true after we initialize all the components for the first time. So now in the onload method, I'll add an if check to make sure that is already loaded is false. And all this code will now go inside this if check. Next, let's add a new method to this class called reset. This method will help us to reset the game world to initial state. Inside this method, I'll call reset methods of player and enemy manager component. And obviously, we'll have to define these methods for this to work. First, let's go to the player.dart file. Here, I'll create a new reset method for player component. And inside this method, I'll reset score to 0, health to 100, and current position to center of viewport. This is the same position we have specified in onload method of game class while initializing the player component. Then next, let's define the reset method for enemy manager. This method will be simple. We just need to stop the spawn timer and then start it again. This will essentially reset it to zero and if we are going back to main menu, it will stay paused at zero because timer updates only when update method of enemy manager is called which is not going to happen when the game is removed from widget tree. Now back in the reset method of space escape game, we'll also have to take care of all the enemies and bullets present in the game world. So I'll use the where type method on the components list to look for all the enemies and then call remove method on each one of them. And then I'll repeat the same thing for bullets too. Now in the on press function of exit button, after removing pause menu overlay, and call reset on game ref. This will reset the game to initial state before we go back to main menu. And the way we have implemented this reset method, it will allow us to provide a way for players to restart the game anytime they want. So let's add a restart button on the pause menu for this. I'll first duplicate this resume button and change this text to restart. Then in the on press function, I'll move resume engine to the end and call game ref dot reset before that. Everything else will stay as it is. Now let's build and run this code. So here I select play and you can see that the game is working normally. And when I press the pause button, the game gets paused and a pause menu gets displayed. If I click on resume, game resumes normally. And if I go back to pause menu and press restart, you can see that the score, health and player position gets reset and all the enemies are removed. Finally, if I go to pause menu again and select exit, we are navigated back to main menu. If I press play button again, the game starts again. And something seems wrong here. Oh, okay. In the onload method of game.dart file, I forgot to set is already loaded to true once everything gets initialized for the first time. So if I do that and hot restart the game, everything should work fine. Okay, so let's press play here. I'll move the player a little downwards and now if I go to pause menu, exit the game and then press play again, it will not reinitialize the game world. And yes, it is working as expected. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.